You've had fun? Okay. Um, so just so you know, you're not in the wrong place. This is the session on Simplify Your Life, Hacks to Make Life Easier, which sounds really cool. So um, I am going to turn it over to our presenter, Harriet Redman, and she's going to tell us, look, it doesn't this look exciting? It's like, oh, what are we going to do? I'm going to make pancakes, I know. So <laughs> Harriet's going to tell you what is going to happen next. Great. I think I'm on. Yeah, I've got one. Yeah. So if you want to give that to me, Lynn, that'd be great. Good afternoon, everybody. We did have a great conference, right? Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to have a great session uh, this afternoon because we're going to talk about life hacks. I really tried to find a hundred life hacks, and there are thousands of them out there. I just didn't have time to get them all down in your handout. And um, so in your, on your table, there are two green handouts. One's bright green. That's the uh, presentation slides. The other is a mint green. Those are the hacks. I got together 63 hacks. Had I got all 100, this would be called Harriet's 100 Hacks. Wouldn't that have been cool? Yeah. It didn't happen. That's OK, though. If you are missing a handout and, there are, and we're short, um, let me know. Um, are there any more? Here's a couple. Um, yeah, a couple back there. Anybody else have handouts at their table that are extra? There we go. Amy's got a couple for folks back there. Excellent. Well, um, as she said, I'm Harriet Redman, and I am with the Wisconsin's, which is an organization that supports brothers and sisters, siblings of people with um, disabilities, all the way from age six to adulthood. So some of your brothers and sisters may be a part of our organization. Some of you may be a part of our organization. Just a quick um, uh, introduction to what we call all that is if you happen to be a person who has a sibling with a disability, and are there any in the room? Okay. Yes, all right. You are a Wisconsin. And all the rest of us, us parents, family members, professionals, self-advocates, <laughs> we're all Wisconsin fans. So let's see how many Wisconsin fans we have here. Yes, great. We're glad you're here. Uh, let me introduce one other person um, that you may have met earlier in a different session. Stephanie is up here with me. Um, Stephanie is also an employee of Wisconsin, and she'll be helping us out um, today. She also did the presentation on um, invisible transitions, um, so that was fun. Well, let's look at hacks. Um, what are life hacks? Wisconsin and their fans want to know. Who can give us an, a definition of a life hack? Anybody want to try? Mm. A life hack. How many of you have heard of life hacks? Yeah. OK, a few. If you've been on social media, they're all over the place. Um, life hacks are uh, kind of a spin off of hacking computers and that kind of thing. But it's really hacking everyday kinds of um, operations that we do, everything, everyday kind of things that we do. So life hacks are shortcuts or how-tos or tricks to simplify your life. For example, how many of you have ever gotten magic marker, that dates me, permanent marker, when they first came out they were called magic markers. Um, how many of you have ever gotten permanent marker on something that was unintentional, yeah. you didn't want to do that? Well, here's an example of some life hacks. If you got it on your clothing, use some hand sanitizer to get it off. It'll come right out. If you got it on the walls, use some toothpaste to get it out. Or hairspray. I've used that. That does work. If you get it on wood, say you um, got it on your furniture, use a little rubbing alcohol. But do be careful because rubbing alcohol can also take off varnish. So if it's a varnished wood, don't use that. Um, if you get it in your carpet, a little white vinegar. White vinegar like this. We'll get that out. Um, if you do get it on your furniture with the varnish, use milk to get it out. Um, or this is a popular one, writing on the whiteboard after somebody told you not to use that marker and you did anyway. Yeah. 
a permanent marker on a whiteboard. Um, take it a, a, like a pencil eraser. Um, also those um, uh, Mr. Clean uh, rubby, uh, eraser pads, those work too. Or if you get it on glass, um, a little bit of toothpaste <coughs> and some baking soda also get that off. Or if you really rub really hard, if you've got rough hands like mine, that also <laughs> works because it's the grit in the toothpaste and the, the baking soda. So life hacks can be anywhere. You can use them in the community. You can use them in the house or the kitchen, really anywhere. So Lindell. A, a dog or pet? Yeah. Anybody have a solution? How do you get dog or pet stains out of a carpet? Anybody Go got a Ace hack? Hardware. We have yeah. rentals. Go to Ace Hardware. <laughs> Go to Ace Hardware. <laughs> Ask your I, Ace Hardware guy. Vinegar? That'd be good. Vinegar. Maybe somebody who has a smartphone can look up a hack for solving uh, Lindale's problem. Because that's how you get these hacks. You, you find them on uh, social media. So, and, and the part that is great about life hacks is it's fun because you're discovering new ways and you're going, well, what do you know, that really worked or I can solve a problem just by looking in my cabinet because I've got all the stuff I need. I just didn't know I had it. And you learn that you're pretty resourceful and you're, you, you, can, you can do this on your own. So how many of you would like to try some hacks? Raise your hand. I'm going to bring you. Um, Mary Lynn, would you like to help me pass out a few hacks? Yes. Okay. I'll start in the back here. Let's. There you go. There you go. Yeah, we'll pass out all the bags. So, Anne, if you. Want to get some of the closer ones? Oh, that one's yours, yes. yes. Do these? No. Okay. All right. Just the bags. Okay. Awesome. Bag. Make yeah. Weird. No. Okay, so we're going to uh, talk about a number of the life hacks, but the ones with the bags, we're actually going to have you working on those. So some of you can see some of the things that I have up here, but what we're basically doing is taking everyday stuff, Dawn detergent, dental floss, kitty litter, all these kinds of things have more than one use. Just like some medications have some um, multiple uses or sometimes the side effects from a, uh, from a medication uh, help solve a different that. problem. Yeah, some of you have some direct experience with that actually. Mm. These all um, are items that you might think that's a pizza cutter, but it might have more utility than just a pizza cutter, and it can make your life simpler. Or an ice cube tray. I was going to bring ice cube trays. I don't own any. I was surprised. I should have gone to Ace Hardware and got some ice cube tra trays. But um, I think maybe my I'm handout I could tray oh. got out there. Yeah, it did. <laughs> Sorry. Grab um, Matthews I, is, uh, uh, it had circles oh, around some of the numbers. Oh, I know which young man am I, that. Uh, and, uh, am I, excuse me, oh, am I um, interrupting or no? No, you're fine. Okay. Um, oh, so sorry. I, I would say is, um, I said a good idea what I, what I have, something I just thought of. With an Got a hack tray, idea with coming an ice here. Cube tray, um, like if somebody want, if somebody really like Jello, uh, but yeah. they don't, they don't want to eat a big uh, chunk of Jello out of a pan. Uh, they could just use an ice cube tray. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's what I just, that's what I just thought of right out of my, right out of my mind. Yep. Because I am. It's it, kind of crazy, but every once in a while, I get uh, I, somewhere in my mind, I get things that like pop out of nowhere. Yeah, those are, <laughs> and those are good things because uh, he was suggesting that an ice cube tray. If you don't want a bunch of um, Jello in a big pan, you put it in the ice cube tray, pop that out. You can do the same kind of thing with. Um, 
muffin um, egg tins egg. or this kind of thing. Um, that way you can have individual servings. Same idea, and there's a couple of hacks on here. Um, if you are a um, oatmeal lover, make your oatmeal ahead of time, put it in a muffin uh, tray, stick it in the freezer. When it's all frozen, take them out, just pop them out, and put them in a bag. And then the next time you want to have oatmeal, you just pick one out of the bag, stick it in the microwave, boom, you've got oatmeal all ready to go in just half the time makes your life simpler. So who has hack number one? There's a pink, um, what have you got in your bag? I have um, three cold noodles and a bag of carbs. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, oh. so um, what do you th how do you think that's gonna work? What, what do you do with that? Yeah, so if you have maybe a challenge holding cards or you just get tired of holding the cards, take a, a pool noodle and, and hand, uh, hold up the other um, littler, the short. The littler one? Yeah, and you just cut that. Um, can you see where the cut is so you can show them? I can't. Where's that at? Oh, there it is. Yeah, you just cut it. And then you can put your cards in there. If you would want to demonstrate how you put the cards in there, there you go. And you just make your whole hand. And that sits in front of you rather than having to hold the cards. Or maybe you have um, neuropathy or you have a little challenge with holding uh, cards or recipes or you know anything like that. You can make yourself a little Are card you, holder. Uh, excuse me. Uh, use a um like a um like if you have like um uh, uh like a um mm, uh like a um book holder sort of like they sort of like this mm -hmm. because, uh, but it's a little it's a book holder. Yeah. I think you guys know what a book holder is, right? Sure. That would help you hold your book, right? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Okay, um, the second one you all know about um, ad address labels, right? You get them in the mail for free or yeah. make a donation, you get them. Take them with you everywhere. If you were at the conference, there were different ways of signing up for things, right? Mm -hmm. Got your address mails. How many of you do this already? You bring your address labels with you. Yep, it's a really quick way to make your life easier. Instead of filling all that out, you just bring these along. You stick them in your purse, your pocket, whatever. The, these are uh, really easy peasy, makes your life simpler. Okay, um, number four, I thought I would share with you, because I think this is, this is brilliant up here in, in uh, Wisconsin. Just get yourself a, a spray bottle and fill it with rubbing alcohol. You spray your, your um, windshield mm -hmm. and it doesn't frost up. Hmm. Easy, right? Oh. Spray it the night before, next morning. You don't have to scrape all that frost off. Yes, go ahead. Let, let Mary Lynn uh, get your, yeah. The silica gel packs you get in everything, pill bottles, your shoes, your purses. Take those if the inside of your car freezes in the winter time and put them under your seat. It'll soak up the extra moisture in your car. So when you turn on the defrosters, the whole inside doesn't freeze over. Ah. Huh. And, and there, um, that's a good that's a good idea. Another thing. Uh, my uh, uh, my, my, um, uh, uh, caregiver, what she had, what her family, uh, when she got in college, is, I am not exactly sure what it's made out of, but it can, it can fold up easily, easily oh, for a windshield? and then what you 
do um, is you put it in front of your uh, front of front of your windshield, mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, and uh, your and then your rear grim mirror will hold it up. Mm -hmm. And then that doesn't make it so hot in there in the summertime. Uh, well, it, or I mean, yeah, hot or uh, uh, free, uh, freeze the. Yeah. yeah, keeps it warm. Like frost, like frost. Yeah, it keeps the frost off of the off of the windshield. Yeah, who has number five? Who's got bag number five? Share with share with us what hack you have in there. Uh, you take a Oops, Hi. sorry, sorry. You take a toothbrush holder for like a travel holder, and put um, straws inside to use them when you're in public. Okay, so when would it be helpful to have bendy straws? with you when you're out to eat and they don't have bendy straws especially if you might have a small child you might have someone with a disability you might have some chance oh they don't fit <laughs> be sure to get a toothbrush holder that is long enough for your bendy straws <laughs> that's great um, but a lot of times uh, you can get a straw at a, a, a restaurant but you can't get that bendy straw and if you need help with your beverage or soup or something that's a really helpful thing to just have in your purse um, our son and I'm not sure where he is Philip um, he he drinks more uh, daintily and, and tidy if he has a straw so but not every place has this, the sippy cup thing so uh, and sometimes he's 24 years old sometimes I don't really want him to have the Mickey Mouse cup you know so I carry the straws, but not in that particular t toothbrush holder, because I thought it would be nice to have a clean one, but <laughs> it was a little short. Okay, um, another thing that I've learned from my son that is really helpful, um, we have these bath mats all over our house. Philip is, um, sometimes has an accident, and these are so much more comfortable and so much better looking in the house and our caregivers, they take these and they put them in their car because sometimes Philip will have that accident in a caregiver's car. They can have a, a, just a plain old bathroom um, rug with the rubber back. It's very comfortable. It looks fine. It actually helps keep him in the seat too because it's, it's soft and plush. Um, so I highly recommend, um, and you can get them in the colors that you have in your home interior. So I, we have a bunch of those that, that we use. And they're, they're not as slippery as Chuck's, and that's good because those will slip. Um, I noticed earlier today on Philip's wheelchair, we had a Chuck and then one of those, well, guess what? It slid. If you just have this, it won't, it won't slide. So um, that's a recommendation I have. Um, I, Stephanie, you had a recommendation um, for when you um, go to the grocery. Tell us about your learnings. I only have one good hand. Um, I call my left hand the dork hand because it never listens to me and never uh, really d does what I wanted to when I wanted to. So for produce shopping, I use. I can hold it up. Thanks. The one hand thing again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the nifty clear deli? boxes yeah. from the deli. And I have the um, cashier open them up when I go through the checkout line and simply scan in the produce. And it, it lasts longer in the fridge and it's really easy to open one handed. And, yep, right. It, all of us have trouble with those bags, uh, whatever <laughs> expletive you want to call them. Um, those bags in the grocery store, you can't, you can't open them up. The secret is having wet fingers, but I don't know about you. If I'm pushing the cart, I don't want to be spitting on my fingers to open those things up. So um, Stephanie uh, goes right to the deli and gets the boxes. And they don't always look like this. Sometimes they're square or whatever. And puts her um, lettuce and... Yep. All that stuff. Sticks that in there, and um, then it, it's easier. Makes your life simpler, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, 
where are we on? We are, um, oh, Evernote. How many of you have Evernote on your, your phone? Yeah, that's the way to take notes. Not only if you're in a session, but you just met somebody, they don't have a business card, you need to write down something about them, you pull out your phone. You probably knew that. But it's a good reminder that we have so many tools within our fingers that we don't think about using in different ways. And that's the secret behind life hacks, is use those tools in different ways. Um, if you have a little challenge with holding a pen, it's not quite heavy enough, just use um, nuts, not the kind you eat, but the kind that your husband always needs. Um, the, you know what I mean, right? Nuts and bolts. And, and just slip those on the end of the pen, and it'll, it will add a little weight to it. Um, an occupational therapy idea, right? But it works for everybody, because sometimes those pens, um, you just need a little more weight to, to give you the grip and the um, help you need to, to make a better um, signature. Um, oh, I like this one, number 16, um, tub and shower cleaner. Our tub and shower gets nasty. Um, again, you get out that spray bottle. In this case, you fill it half full with white vinegar. Very inexpensive. I think this is $1.19. Keep it in your pantry. And then fill the rest of it with um, Dawn. This stuff does everything. Um, spray your tub and shower and, and then rinse it down or not. You can leave it up there. It's not um, gross or anything. Um, and that's an inexpensive solution to all those products in the grocery that cost four, five, six bucks. You can make this for a lot less, a couple bucks. All right, who has number 19? All right, Lindale, what's in there? Baking soda. And two eggs, one craft. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, why don't you try um, peeling that egg? Oh, the cracked one? Either one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, make a mess. Oh, wow. It makes it come right off. Right. If you put a little baking soda in the water when you're hard boiling an egg, you, do, you don't make a huge mess with uh, the peel because it comes right off. How many of you have mothers that told you that? Mine either. I, I just learned that recently. I thought that was brilliant. That, and it probably is a hack that's been from time began. But I had not ever heard of it. And it, and it works, as Lindale has just shown us. Did you have another one? OK. Can we wait until she's on this side of the room? Can you remember it? Yeah. OK. Otherwise, Mary, Mary Lynn's going to quit on me because I'm having her run all over. We'll kind of make a round. Yes? You had said that on number 16 about the Dawn and the white vinegar. I actually use um, white vinegar and baking soda. And I have, it, it works great in the tub and For the same purpose? Well. Yep, oh. absolutely. And what I do is I have a, well, it's a Pampered Chef one, but you could use any one. I have the sugar and cinnamon shaker from uh -huh. Pampered Chef that I put the baking soda in, and then you spray it with the vinegar and just works the same way. So Does it keep the grout from getting nasty? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's yeah. that's great. Yeah, because yeah. that gets nasty. Yes. Yeah. Clean sinks with it. That makes sense. Drain. Oh, drainer. Yeah, to clean out the drain and the whole pipe. Yeah, good, good idea. Yes. You know. I don't know that. Is, if any, how long does your mixture keep when you use the baking soda? Well, I don't mix them together. I don't. Oh, because that would go. In a spray bottle, yeah. Right, and then you just sprinkle. Yeah, the, I wouldn't know. think there's anything that would get nasty about you that. Can keep it under the sink sure. Yeah. yeah, just like you would any cleanser that you buy at the grocery, because there's nothing in there that's okay. gonna create bacteria. Yes. Yeah, I think that I think it just causes the heat causes a, a, a reaction that bonds it so that it doesn't like the dawn doesn't go to the bottom and the alcohol at the top. So it, it's sort of an emulsification thing. 
I'm not a chemist, but I think that's why you heat it is to create that. Uh, 21, who has number 21? Right up here. Mary Lynn is getting closer to you. So, what have you got in your bag? Uh, I have a bottle of uh, Nestle Townhouse cookie dough. Well, you have a Sprite bottle, and then inside that doesn't have to be in there. Chocolate chips. Yeah. You have an open bag of chocolate chips and a bottle of Sprite. Mm -hmm. And what has happened with the bottle of Sprite? Uh, pour it in. Somebody cut it? Do I want to cut the bottle top off? Yes, somebody has cut the bottle top. Can I hold it up so everybody can see it? Okay. So, um, start out with a bottle, cut this part off. And after I did this, this is not the best example because this is a bit small for, uh, but for demonstrating, it will work. I'm going to use your, um, that bag. Yeah. Oh, do you do it like that? Okay. Yeah. I so, the well, usually um, I would take that open bag of um, uh, anything. It can be chocolate chips or whatever. And let's say this is an open bag of chocolate chips. still has chocolate chips in it. Okay. Um, you just take this up through here okay. like that and pull it over the top okay. like this. And now you have created a closure for your chocolate chips and then you can pour them out and it seals, it seals them. This works really well for um, you know, anything that you're gonna pour out or if it's a little bit bigger, it's great for um, marshmallows where you can't get a good closure on it because, um, but you need a bigger, a bigger neck. But then when you have the marshmallows in here and you want to seal them, you just take your cap and, um, and it's sealed. A Gatorade bottle, yeah, um, or any, anything that has a large top works, works really well. And you can still keep it in the bag with all the, you know, the recipes or the calorie counts or all that stuff that you want on the bag. You still have that. Were you going to add something? I just cut this with a scissors. I poked a hole and then cut it with a scissors. Um, you can also buy, and I'll use this as an example, you can buy that same concept. Um, this is called a Copco, and it's basically a ring or the plastic bottle and a top, and you bring the, the bag up over and put that on there. And I, I use this for my brown sugar, um, um, lots of different things in the pantry that you want to keep in the bag, but you want a nice closure. And um, this is about four bucks. This is nothing. It's just recycling. So that's what that one is. Does anyone have a related hack like that? Okay, well, let's move on. Um, Oh, we got the ice cube tray thing again. This one I think is brilliant, and I haven't tried this, but I think it, I will be. Um, we, we grow herbs in our garden. If you cut those up and put them in an ice cube tray, add your olive oil, and then freeze it. You can just pick those out and stick them right on top of a salad. Or if you're going to saute something in oil and herbs, stick it in your fry pan. It's all set to go, and it's fresh because they've been frozen, it's not all dried out, and it's not messy. It has all the things you need. So um, I haven't tried that one, but I really like that. I think that I'll, I'll do that. Who has number 23? Okay, what you got? I have dental floss and little cakeies. Yeah. So what do you imagine you would do with those things? Well, usually I'd eat the little cakeies <laughs> without cutting them. <laughs> but, uh, but since I'm going to share with you, right, I was going to say the, the, the key to uh, the demonstration is um, try to make it realistic. This is probably not realistic because you would I any of us would just eat that in two bites. Oh, yeah. So then you take your dental floss and you cut through. 
so you can share. Yeah. Now, it's not so important. I can't for make these 64 pieces. <laughs> <laughs> it's not so important for these little hostess cakes, um, but this technique works really well if you are making cinnamon rolls or yeast rolls, and you've rolled out your dough and you put the cinnamon on and the, all that good stuff. You roll it up, and then the instructions say cut it in one inch. If you use dental floss, it will stay round because when you cut with a knife, they start to go flat. But if you just take your dental floss and almost do like a tourniquet around each cut, you just boom, boom, and it goes very fast. It also works really nice on fresh mozzarella cheese, that soft cheese that um, you want to slice, and it gets, it sticks to the knife, and it, you know, it's a mess. Use dental floss, boom, 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 and it makes nice cuts. It's very simple. And um, you have it in your cabinet. Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a good, good, good counsel. That's that's great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mary Lynn, where are you? I'm right here. Oh, oh, come on over. Let's get this table. We got a couple of things over here. Um. Oh. What kind of dental floss you have to use? Really, you can use any kind, although uh, avoiding mint if you're using it on cheese is probably a good idea. But the, um, the ribbon or I'd go with cheap. Uh, cheap, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's different types of dental yeah. floss, not just the, not the flavors that I'm talking right. about. There might be some that has some strain, yeah. some strains on it. I wouldn't go out and buy dental floss just to cut <laughs> yeah. Cake. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, what have you got in the cabinet? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, she wanted to add something earlier, and now that you're over here. Did you have a hack? Do you remember the hack you had? Yeah. I had um, the, when you are peeling, like, it's a pain to peel garlic. Oh. And you can put it in a mason jar and shake it, and the peel will come off. Really? And I, I think that's the same with the eggs, but I'm not sure you're going to have to look that up. But. but you just take your garlic. You don't do anything to it other than break it into yeah. the, the cloves. And then, and then shake it in a mason jar. Yeah. And all that stuff will come off. Yeah. That's interesting. Anybody ever do that? No. Yeah? It works? Cool. Yeah. That's... I know what kind of... What's that? I know what kind of... What I did one time is I bought an ice cube, but I didn't want to use water. What scary kind of funny, but I did a pop an ice cube and made it so many ice cubes. That's a, actually a really good idea. He didn't have ice to make ice cubes for and his I soda, so he poured soda in, water. which is a great idea because then it doesn't water down your soda, right? Okay. Well, I want yeah. to use water, but I didn't want to use water. So you pop the yeah, yeah, good idea. Um, let's see, where are we? We did, we did 22. Um, we did, well, we kind of did the hard boiled eggs in the muffin cup. Again, if you don't want to experiment with the baking soda in the um, boiling the hard boiled eggs, just put an egg in each of the cups of um, a muffin tin and bake them rather than hard boil them. It'll be the same, it's just that you won't have to peel them afterwards. Or I've seen some folks um, are making mini omelets. They'll, they'll put their egg and their cheese or whatever they like and bake them ahead of time. Again, throw them in a bag then. When you're in a hurry in the morning for I'm breakfast, just pull them out. Question, please. Yes. My question would be, I have plenty of my and Chuck, and he is Bad hands. So we got bad hands. How can we make it easier for them to do what they want to do? Okay, let's let's see if somebody's got some um, ideas. You have a friend who has difficulty um, his with his hands. How can he make a hard boiled egg? Is that your well, question? I even make it easier for them. Oh, okay. Well, a lot of these my dad, things. My dad, yeah, my dad. yeah. A lot of different things will will be helpful for for whatever he's looking. 
to do. Yeah, yeah, but good point. Some of these are um, to simplify your life if you have some um, challenges. Yeah, all right. Um, number 23, we did that one, right? Yes, yeah. we did. Okay. Um, oh, um, does anybody have 28? Did I yeah, hand that? Oh, you do. Okay, good. What you got? <coughs> oh, the strawberry and the straw technique. Okay, holding strawberries. Yeah, so you've got a straw. Yeah, got two kinds of straws. They're two different sizes. Yeah. Yeah, so, I had two straws. Yeah, and this is a technique to help you haul or take the stem off of a strawberry. Which straw do I use? It this? doesn't matter. Whichever one works. You got the idea. Yep. So she's sticking the straw through the strawberry up through the, the stem, and it is it working? Yeah, there she goes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So can I show everybody? Yeah. That'd be, yeah. Okay, so basically, whoops. Whoopsies. Yeah. I once did a demonstration at, um, when I was in college, and I was um, demonstrating how to um, put together a lamp, wire a lamp, mm -hmm. and... Um, you know, things were going well, but I had a little difficulty with the final step, which was to connect the wires. Mm. Connected the wires. I shorted out the second floor of the education building. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so who knows what will happen. But anyway, you got your strawberry, you got a straw, and instead of taking the knife and trying to dig it out, oh. you just put the straw underneath and you haul your strawberry that way. Um, wow. This is kind of a neat look, though, too. I'm not sure... Yeah what I'd use it for, but just having the straw. And there are different straw sizes. I put this one in. This is one of those super big straws. This is if you had a super big strawberry. This didn't require that, but yeah. And Did you, you have say a cup? more of the straw, you save more of the, of the strawberry. Yeah, yeah right. You save more of the strawberry, yes. Yeah. Instead of taking all the nutrition up, yeah. I, I left my... Oh, it's right oh, there. Oh, thank you. Okay, thank you for demonstrating that. Um, 29, who has 29? Yes. What you got in there? It was a plastic bag. A plastic bag, a Ziploc bag. A Ziploc bag. There's a bun. Okay, a bun from lunch. Yeah, and cookies. And cookies, okay. What is one of the problems with cookies if you don't eat them right away, especially the soft kind? They get stale and they get hard and they get too difficult to eat. Now, I realize in most cases the cookies don't last that long, but <laughs> once in a while at Christmas time when you have a whole bunch of cookies or, or you're giving your, uh, or you've gotten some cookies and you're not ready to eat them, you need to freshen them up. So what do you do in this case, Nicole? Um, so do I put cookies in the bag? Put the cookies in the bag. Okay. And? Okay. My cousin Deanna did these ones. Is it okay? <laughs> I didn't make these cookies. That's why I make it that. Yeah. What bread was from? Exactly. You put bread in there. Yeah. What does the bread do? Okay. What's in the bread so that the, the cookies, cookies need? Okay. Moisture. Moisture. Right. Right. Moisture. Yeah. The bread has moisture, uh, unless it's been in her car, and then it doesn't. <laughs> but the, the cookies will draw out the moisture from the bread. That also works for other things. What other kinds of foods do we store that needs moisture? And um, we use bread to moisture, uh, provide much. Brown sugar, yeah. Same technique, or same technique and same purpose is um, restoring the moisture. Regular sugar, usually you don't want moisture in your regular sugar because it will stick. Yeah. Who has number 30? You have number 30, what do you have? You have olive oil. And is, 
Is there something else there. in there? There's something else in there. Oh, yep, an egg. <laughs> an egg. 30. So um, I, I won't guarantee that's hard boiled, but you don't have to break it. Okay. Um, you oh. have a crack in it. What, what would you do with that egg the and that oil? oil? I don't think it is hard boiled. You take the oil, olive oil, and you rub each egg when you get it home, and that helps them stay fresh longer. Exactly. Who knew that, right? No. You put uh, oil around your egg. Do you know why that works? No. Why that's important? No. No? It seals the shell. It seals the shell, right. Uh, egg, eggs are very porous. They have a lot of holes in them. And if you uh, put oil on them, that'll seal those holes, and they will last three times longer than really? your eggs would. Wow. Yep. Oh. Just you just have to be a little cautious in the way you do it, but. Uh, cautious. Yeah. Like cautious. Don't drop the eggs. Oh. <laughs> um, another technique is with your bananas uh -huh. and saran wrap. Now this is only two bananas, and they've been in our room for a while. These are, these are beat up bananas, but oh. um, but when you get your bunch of bananas home, mm -hmm. you just take some saran wrap and you kind of seal them, or you just put it around the stem, okay. and they will stay fresher longer as well. Really? Yeah. Don't put them in your refrigerator; they'll turn black. Mm -hmm. But oh, yeah, um, seal this end of the, the uh, banana, oh. and they'll last longer. That would save you some money. Wow. It makes life a little simpler. You don't have to go to the grocery quite so often. Period? Yes. Do you know how, I know, I think there's a trick as to how, like, when you get green bananas in, at the grocery store, which I hate, to how do you get them yellow? Okay. So how, do you how do you get green bananas yellow quickly, I'm assuming? Yeah. Anybody got some um, techniques? Uh, yes. Put them in a paper bag with an apple. Okay. Put them in a paper bag. Okay. I've also heard of um, turning on your oven to like 200, then turning it off and put your bananas in there. What? I've never tried that. Just to get, just to be warm, I guess. Yeah. But the um, acid from the apple probably is a better idea. Really? Yeah. And don't put your apples in with your lettuce in the, in the refrigerator. Your lettuce will turn uh, bad quicker if it's in with apples. Yes, Don? Yeah. Smoothies. Yeah, actually that's one of the hacks. If you have some fruit laying around, it's been around just almost too long, uh -huh. but you're not going to be able to eat it right away, yeah. stick it in the freezer. When you do your bananas, Dawn, do you peel the banana before you stick it in the freezer? No. No. I, uh, no, I leave it in the banana because it preserves it, but then you can also put it in the mic microwave for about um, two seconds, and it, takes, it just takes the edge off, and then it, like, you can peel it real easily. Huh. That's a good hack. Huh, excellent. S All since right. I have the microphone, I'm going to yeah. tell you about, I don't know yeah. how many people have plantar fasciitis. I'm sitting on the floor right now because I have pain and she has a ball that I'm rolling on. Ah. And so anyway, but if people have plantar fasciitis, um, free, free, freezing water bottles and rolling your foot on those water bottles on a regular basis is really, really important and critical to do. Did you all get that? And if you have pain other places in your body, roll yeah. it on there. Freeze a water bottle full of water and roll it wherever you have pain. That, and that's from a physical therapist. She knows what she's talking about. And she's on the floor because she knows what she's talking about. <laughs> all right. Um, let's see. We got the eggs. Um, oh, number 33. And you have number 33. That's your bag up here. Can you tell us what's in the bag and what you're going to do with that bag? Wow, yes. Do you have, have yeah. um, little funnel, plastic funnel, mm -hmm. spatula, mm -hmm. and weirdly, a ketchup <laughs> bottle. Empty. Empty. Yes, very important. Probably rinsed out too. <laughs> oh, good. And, oh, pancake mix, and a star. 
Okay. So, I'm going to demonstrate, right? Sure. So, you put, I think, you there try you to go. Yeah. this out. <laughs> this in there, right? She's working with an empty ketchup bottle. She has her funnel out, and she's opening her pancake mix. At least it's Dan and Lake. Theoretically, this should be easier than doing it in a bowl, but it's taking two people to do it. <laughs> there you go. It's working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like any any material when you put it in a funnel. If you put it all in there at once, it's gonna get in the bottleneck, as they say. Oh, she's going to make up a hack as we go. Yeah, the chopstick. Oh. All right, here's a new hack. Make things go through a funnel faster with a chopstick. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, we learned something. Don't pour it in all at once. I'll explain how it's going to end, and then you can oh. you can oh. keep going. Um, instead of using a bowl and getting out the utensils, just take a, a an empty uh, large ketchup bottle, put your pancake mix and your water. Um, this happens to be a mix that's just water and not eggs, and put it in there, and then shake it. And then when you um, go to make your pancakes, you don't have to dip it or anything. You can just squirt it onto the griddle, makes it real easy. You can throw away the ketchup bottle then if you don't want to save it for the next batch. Um, great for camping or anywhere that you're going to do something quick and you want to get rid of the evidence. Um, you, could <laughs> you could just do that. Now the, um, the reason for the cookie cutter, and I, Anne is so right, it was because she's such a star. But um, the other reason it was in there is, and this is, this is kind of fun, um, you can make different um, shapes of pancakes. So you put your, your cookie cutter on your griddle or pan and then squirt the pancake uh, mixture in there. Um, it's a good idea to put a little oil on there or just do a quick spray so it doesn't stick, but it's really easy. And right just there. make all kinds of shapes that for your kids. Well, we'll keep them busy. Anyway. <laughs> what the real <laughs> the real use for the chopstick while the chop while the chopstick was up here <laughs> was beyond what these women are working on. And that is if you put a cherry on the top of that funnel turned upside down, and then just take your uh, uh, chopstick or a straw, um, you can pit it real quickly. Yeah. Are you, are you done with that? Yeah. Oh, they're onto the water. <laughs> is there, are there any specific instructions about no, how you, I pour this in? Uh, uh, <laughs> Would it matter? <laughs> there you go. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> okay. You said it didn't matter. Well, I didn't think you put it all in. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> so there they go. They're going to be pancakes. making pancakes. I thought I had some spray. Um, oh. I'm not seeing it, so I don't know if oh. we have. We might need to use your olive oil to well, put a little bit on the, the griddle. Yeah, do your exercise. Get get a couple hacks done at once. So so for the cherries, this is this is the idea. Is you take a funnel upside down, put the cherry on top, and then go like that to pit it. Yeah. Um, personally, it it does work, but my hack that I always use is a uh, paper clip. I just get a paper clip and pit the cherries. 
Um, so that, that works faster for me, but that's kind of fun. Um, let's see. Um, oh, I like this idea. Um, they were selling chocolate covered cherry or chocolate covered strawberries at the little stand, and I think they're like three fifty, three dollars, three fifty a piece. Uh, the other thing you can do, and I really like this idea, is you can take um, maybe not this large, maybe those mini muffin tins, and melt some um, chocolate chips and fill those. And before it gets hard, just put a, a strawberry in each one. And then you have chocolate covered cherries, right? Or chocolate covered strawberries. I suppose you could do it with cherries. Yeah, and you just you pop them out. And they'll take the shape of the, the tin, but that would be okay because you're going to eat them. Yeah. Um, and they'll be delicious yeah. and fast. Yeah. And you don't have all the easy. mess and easy. Make your life simpler. And you have everything. Oh my God. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, I'm not sure what we lost that one, but anyway, um, I have to tell you a funny story about um, number 38. Um, my parents, they grew up in the Depression. They did not throw anything away, and some of you have parents that, that probably also grew up in the Depression. They never throw anything away. My mother never, ever, ever threw away pickle juice. She would just use that pickle juice and make a new batch of pickles. And um, now you have to, I wish you could know my parents because they were hysterical just in their everyday life doing stuff that they just do. But um, I was visiting one time and um, my mother had this gigantic <laughs> bottle of, or <laughs> jar of pickles that she had made. Actually, it were pickles that she had thrown all together and pickles were pickling pickles and vegetables and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, this had been around for quite some time and she couldn't pop the lid. Mm -hmm. So I set it down in the sink to get a better grip mm -hmm. and I popped the lid and because she had had them for so long, <laughs> it'd be like anything else that you keep in your refrigerator. They had no mold. They were, they were <laughs> just fine. But the bubbles shot up like champagne. Because the pickle juice had fermented. And, and I, I put that back on, and I, I thought she'd throw them away. But no, they did eat those pickles. And, but they were fermented. And a lot, we eat a lot of fermented foods, and they were fine. But um, so this is a great idea. Number 20 or 38 is a great idea. If you have some um, vegetables that you, you had for dinner, um, they were just steamed, and you had some leftovers, Throw them in the, ch the pickle jar, and they will pickle, and they'll be delicious. I would just caution you, maybe after one or two uses, you know, go for a new jar of pickles. But um, it, it, they are delicious. Um, it works. Who has... Um, uh, should we, we have to turn this when it's in the, the star? In the star, or like... Yeah, give us a clue. Oh, uh, you have to take it off to flip it. Okay, but yeah. you have a half bed? Oh, No. We'll just pretend it happened and it was yeah. great. Okay. Okay. okay, so they made a great batch of star pancakes. All right, who has um, number 40? Ah, uh, you have it. Okay, what, what have we got here, Stephanie? We have eggs and we have a plate. We have a plate and we have some eggs. We have a water bottle. Yes. And oh. do you know what's going on? Yes, it is. All right. So an empty water bottle, a plate, and some, these are raw yeah. eggs. I'm going to ask for help from my there table mates on this one. Because okay. I there you know go. they're back from. <laughs> okay, what they're going to do, and you can, you can do two or three eggs. Just, just break them and um, break them open on the plate and put the shells back in the container. There you go. I didn't bring. Ah, she opens wow. one egg with the other egg. That's a good idea. Wow. Okay, that's probably all that plate's gonna hold. So, you know, it's just basically two eggs on a plate. Okay. Sounds like the name of a book. Two eggs on a plate. And you're gonna separate those yolks from the eggs. Do you have any idea how you're gonna do that with this water bottle? Uh, 
<laughs> okay. How how would you do it? Squeeze the air out of the. And yeah, you got the idea. Go ahead. It has to touch the yolk. There you go. What? Yeah. Yeah. The key is you um, take the the water out of the the bottle, put it onto your yolk, and now it's getting sort of crunchy. Um, on your yolk, release. Oops, I had the same problem. Um, I did it just great at home, though. Oh, you had to be Yeah, there we go. Um, but anyway, you can um, separate your eggs that way. And then if you like to save your egg yolks for pudding and all that kind of stuff, um, you can just put it in your pudding or bowl or whatever. Um, and then use your egg whites for your seven uh, or your seven minute uh, frosting or your angel food cake. Yeah. Oh, that's oh and cool. it's even stayed that time. So isn't that fun? That's a fun one. You know, even if even if it's easier to do another way, that's just that's just fun. We're gonna do two more and then we have door prizes. So um, let's see what who do I have up here? Oh, okay. You know, decorating a birthday cake uh -huh. is, it takes a lot of time. It can be kind of um, yeah. um, hard to do. A pain. You can buy these stencils, or does anybody have a Cricut? Or know somebody has a Cricut at school or something? Cricut? Those Cricut um, paper cutters, you cut out um, uh, uh, letters and symbols and that kind of thing. Well, you just use one of these on top of your cake, and then put your sprinkles on. And then this, um, this will show through that. If you don't have sprinkles and you're not going to be going anywhere to get sprinkles, just use Jello. Jello. Just sprinkle it on there. At first, it's not going to be real colorful, but the more it absorbs the moisture in your frosting, it will turn the color of your, of your Jello. Wow. And that, that works too. And, oh, it good. and it tastes good. Yes, oh. it does. Um, Last one, number 54. This one is um, a, another Dawn detergent. Um, mix cool. Dawn detergent, okay. rubbing alcohol, and some water, and pour it on your sidewalk um, so they don't freeze. Wow. How does what? it do that? How does it do that? Well, the ribbon alcohol will, will um, evaporate, and the Dawn must have some sort of property that breaks up um, the alcohol and, and intersperses it so that I'm not really sure. Anybody a chemist? Yes. Oh, I'm not a chemist. Oh, well, I'm not sure what the chemistry is, but um, I, you know, it's worth trying because um, s slippery sidewalks are horrible, and it's it's worth taking um, a shot. Um, we're running out of time to do more hacks. Yes. On what? Maybe. It, it seems like that would work. The, the rubbing alcohol definitely works because you just put the, no, yeah, it, it, it definitely works. What we need to do next, because I have about 12 after 2, is that what you have? Um, we need to give some door prizes away. Before we do that, the name tags in your, that, that you have, that is, your, that is your ticket to door prizes. So Mary, Mary Lynn is going to um, collect those, or if somebody can collect them at your table, and then we'll get those. Um, just the name, just the. Well, what do they want? Everything. They want everything. You can keep your, keep your name. I, I'm collecting them all. If you want to keep your name. No, problem. no we need the name because we're going to pick their name. Oh yeah, we do need your name. <laughs> I suppose they do want it all. Yeah, I can take it. For here. No, we have door prizes here. We have door prizes here first, and then all of your name tags will go to the big room, and that's where the grand prizes will be um, selected. You keep this here. I'm going to go collect them. Okay. So. Great. Great. If you have to go, um, we'll find you.
Yes. Any other names? Oh, no, there's there we go. Some right there. We'll we'll do these really quick. I, I forgot my name. Home Thank today. you. Oh, you forgot your name? Yeah. Okay. Any more? All right. Would you like to pick a name? Oh. There we go. Did you pick a name? No, not yet. Oh. Yeah, now you can do it. <clears throat> and yeah, Ann has the. There we go. And who do you have? Steve Pills. Steve Pills. Right there. Want a prize. Want to pick another one? Want a prize. So come on up, Steve. You can get a prize. Got one? Sierra Stafford. Sierra Stafford. Um, Woohoo! Woo there we go. No problem. Just take the cookies. Oh, she can have cookies. You go take it. You take it. You're yours. There you go. I'm sure. Who's that? I understand. It's okay. Nicole Strosny? Is she still here? There we go. How many, how many prizes do we have? Just the speaker that you can Oh, that's the speaker prize. Oh, okay. Well, no, it's not anymore. <laughs> okay. This is our fourth one. How many prizes do we have, Ann? We have three more left. Oh, that went back in. Or one of them. Here we go. Angela Nicholson. Oh, that's you, Woohoo! Oh. Right there, and then we have two after that, right? Okay, two more. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Bader or Bader? Oh, there she is. And the last one. Patty Fergus. Oh, yeah. Woohoo! Yay! Thank you, Thank you all. Uh, go to the closing session and there will be more prizes announced there. Thank you. I don't know if these need to go back in there or not. Thank you.